after these two presentations, I would like to say that when you fight against racism, and of course SOS Racism in France is um, an organization to fight against racism, anti-Semitism, and uh, discrimination. It's not something we do for glory. It's simply because racism uh, is not just unpleasant to hear, but racism leads to consequences which can be apocalyptic. And if in a society you allow the seeds of racism to grow, you have no idea how far it can go. In fact, we do know in some cases how far it can go. It can lead all the way to extermination. And I saw what happened in Rwanda. I went to Rwanda in 2006 in a trip or organized by Jewish uh, organizations in France. And if there was extermination, it was because there were words to begin with, the radio of the hills, which disseminated words of hate, education to hate. So these things start with words. And people consider that some others in the society are not human. Very often people are... Um, called all kinds of animal names, the Jews were called rats, the Tutsis were called um, cockroaches and so on. And when you have a society where some people are treated differently, where the society considers that some people can be treated differently, things become very, very dangerous. And if we are lucky enough to live in a society and in a country where there's civil peace and where equality of rights, however imperfect, is nevertheless a reality, then it is difficult to consider what the situation can be. One should never consider oneself only a victim, because if you have the opportunity of doing something, one should consider oneself as a citizen, as someone who can um, trace one's future, because the world in which we live in our societies, at least here in the West, these are societies for which we are fighting, because we're not in the center of this ter permanent turmoil that is making your life a misery and endangering it. So at SOS Racism, we fight against racism, and we can also see uh, what I've just said, but racism is not something which is natural or something which has always existed. Racism has a history. Racism emerged in very specific situations throughout humanity. It is a historical and cultural construct, and one can fight against this type of phenomenon. For example, and this is a discussion which is very sensitive in France because it leads to uh, all kinds of manipulations, namely when we get back to certain uh, historical periods in the life of a country, for example, uh, history cannot only look at the past, but very often historical uh, work can also destroy some of the origins of racism, for example, or other aspects, for example, the history of the Algerian war, it is something which the French have refused to look at. They've refused to go back and look at the situation because it is rather traumatic. And so the Algerians and all the North Africans are somehow uh, associated with people who will stick a knife in your back if you turn your back on them. And so when you go back and look at history, you shouldn't do so with a, an idea of um, getting revenge or anything like that. But the idea is to, con to build a common future, to build a cultural substrate on which 
racism is very often built. Racism and discrimination. This cultural substrate is not always conscious. It's not something that people are aware of. It's not necessarily something that people want to uh, set up. These are references that are very common and one should sometimes examine them. For example, last night we slept in, ho in a hotel called Kipling Hotel. Kipling is um, a writer that people remember, but he was not a very nice person when it comes to questions of racism. But of course, he did live a long time ago in the past. Now I look at my um, pen, Carondash. Carondash is, I don't know whether it refers to the caricature uh, 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 draw. The, the man who drew the caricatures, Carol Dash, uh, who did not have a very glorious um, uh, role in the Dreyfus Affair in France. The second element that I wanted to insist on was the fact that there are societies in, in which one can act as a responsible citizen. So one cannot o only look at the situation as a victim, one should never accept one's role as a victim of society because if that happens you either become passive because if you're a victim you say well why should I do anything because I'm a victim anyway or you can become violent and this is going to determine all your actions because you are full of rage and anger and this is not the way out either so the there are ways of doing things through being a citizen. We try to give people tools to do all kinds of things against discrimination. We want, we ask people to talk about their experiences of discrimination, to become witnesses, but there are other ways of doing things. For example, being a citizen and uh, calling, calling upon public powers, the public administration, to point out what is not working right. 